I'm going to walk you through how to test a proportion. We're going to use this example. According to Forbes magazine, 89% of students say that they use an artificial intelligence, an AI, like ChatGPT, to do their homework. A principal thinks that this percentage is much lower, so she goes out and surveys 200 students. Now I want to take these numbers and put them into the values that we need for our hypothesis test. Let's start with that very first sentence, 89%. Now this is the number that she's comparing against, so this is going to be our expected proportion, and we use P for the expected proportion, 0.89. Now if we go on into to the next sentence, we're talking about her sample. So we had 200 students that she sampled. This is our N, our sample size, 200. Out of those 200, 167 reported using an AI. So that gives us our X. You can think of those as your favorable outcomes, 167. Now the two of these together give us our sample proportion, which we call P hat, the little V on top of it is a hat. So x out of n, for us that's going to be 167 out of 200, and we found a percentage of 83.5%. So for her sample, p hat, our sample proportion is 0.835. Now we want to test this claim at the 0.05 significance level, and we're going to use our five-step hypothesis testing procedure to do this. Now with our proportion tests, when we're looking for the critical or the test value, we're going to be using Z's. Let's go ahead and start with our hypotheses. Now we need a null and we need an alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to use H sub A and H sub 0. Sometimes you'll see this H sub A as H sub 1 instead. Now for H sub 0, this is going to be what we're assuming to be true based on that expected value. So we're going to say that P is equal to 0.89. But let's see what her claim is. So the principal thinks that the percentage is lower, so we're going to say that she thinks, this is our claim, lower would be less than 0.89. That's step one. In step two, we want to find our critical value. And we're going to find that critical value using the 0.05 significance level. Now you could definitely use a table, but I prefer to use my calculator instead. I'm going to use my TI-84 calculator, and in my calculator, I'm going to go to my distribution menu, so second distribution, and then I want inverse norm. That's going to find me the z-score that goes along with an area. Now, these areas are always from the left, so it's going to be my significance level 0 0.05. This is the normal distribution, so I go ahead and just leave mu and sigma as 0 and 1. I leave it there on the left and then I paste and I end up with a critical Z value of negative 1.6448. We're going to call that negative 1.645. So step number one. Step number two, our critical Z value is equal to negative 1.645. Five. Let's bring up that normal curve. Now I found that critical value and that cuts off that area of 0 0.05. That's our significance level, which is alpha. This is our rejection region. And if we're on the other side in our unshaded area, that's going to be our fail to reject region. So we really need to find what the z-score is for our sample percentage, our sample proportion of 0.835. If we are beyond negative 1.645, so more than 1.645 standard deviations below, then we're going to end up rejecting the null hypothesis. If we aren't, we're going to end up failing to reject the null hypothesis. Let's go ahead and do this calculation, and we need our formula to do that. Let me move this up out of the way a little bit because we're ready here for step number three, and that is our test value, so our test Z. And our test Z is equal to our sample proportion, 0.835, minus our expected proportion of 0.89, all divided by a big square root. So the square root of, in our numerator, we're going to put P sub 0, that's our expected proportion of 0.89, but they're also asking me for 1 minus P sub 0. 
one minus p sub zero. We could also call this q sub zero. That might be familiar to you. If not, no big deal. It's one minus 0.89. And if I do that subtraction, I end up with 0.11. So back inside our square root, I'm going to multiply this times 0.11. And in our denominator goes our n, which is 200. Now I can compute this in my calculator, but I also want to show you how to run the test in that TI-84 calculator. To run the test on my calculator, I'm going to go to my stat menu. So stat menu and then over to tests. And I'm going to choose that one proportion Z test and then hit enter. It's asking me for my expected proportion, which is 0.89. And then X and N. We had 167 students out of the 200. And then this is our alternative hypothesis. It's less than. So let's go ahead and choose less than. And then we're going to arrow down to calculate, and it gives me the same test value that I get from this formula. And that test value ends up to be negative 2.4859. We can call that 86. Let's put this right back onto our normal curve. We are definitely beyond 1.645 standard deviations away, which means that we're gonna reject that null hypothesis. So we're gonna write that we reject the null hypothesis. This is step number four, our decision. So we reject the null hypothesis, reject h sub zero. So step number five, what does this mean about the principal's claim? Did we find that our percentage is significantly lower than that 89%? because we landed in that rejection region, we definitely did. So we can say that there is enough evidence to support her claim. I've got another video for you here. You've got this.